Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, uh, I don't know about you, I don't know about y'all, but I have a fire pit in my backyard at home. How many of you have fire pits? Anybody have fire pits? Oh yeah, more, way more than in the first service. They, they were kind of a little fire shy, I guess. I don't know. I have a fire pit and I love to light fires, especially in the winter when it's cold. Um, but even in the summer times, we make uh, s'mores and pretend like we're at camp. Um, the problem for me is that I'm not very good at getting a fire to light. It's not one of my special gifts. Um, and so a couple of years ago, I decided to, we're just going to have to get, start, getting, start getting fire logs, right? Um, and I found a really good organic one that I was in favor of. It didn't have all the chemicals that were going to burn off and us smell and everything. So found this great organic log, and I was reading the instructions and making sure that I was, you know, tearing it in the right places. It was going to actually light, and I wasn't going to fail at that, too. So, um, so I did that, and on, they, in big letters on the package, I also read this warning that said, caution may be flammable. <laughs> and I thought, I sure hope so. <laughs> but it did make me think about like, what other ridiculous warnings are there out there in the world? I figured there must be a few. So I went to the Google, right? I went to Google it. And uh, I didn't even get through the whole phrase. I think I got through, um, ridiculous wah and warning labels popped up because it's looked up so many times. There are so many of them. So I thought I might share a few of those with you today. Um, do not hold the wrong end of a chainsaw. <laughs> Any guesses on what product this is for? The chainsaw. Mm -hmm. Yep. A sleeping pill may cause drowsiness. This one, this one beat it all though. Hair dryer, do not use while sleeping. <laughs> I, yes, yeah. And, and to be perfectly honest, it said it was on several. So this is like a thing, right? It was on several brands, so it wasn't just one. Um, my, my last favorite was the, the sun shield, you know, you put in your dash to protect your dashboard. It said, <laughs> you're probably gonna guess this, do not drive with the sunshade in place. The funny thing is, most of these labels exist because somebody probably did it, right? And maybe they even sued, I don't know. I don't know why you would sue somebody for picking up the wrong end of a chainsaw because that just seems like common sense, but somebody did it. Um, and I do sometimes even question how often do we read the warning labels on things, just like, you know, we only read the directions when we finally need them because everything's falling apart. And in these cases, uh, hindsight's always 2020, right? Um, for some folks, uh, I know that language is changing. Some of our young people might not have ever heard this phrase before. Hindsight is 2020 means that after the fact, you look back and you go, oh yeah, that makes sense. I should have known. You see it much more clearly after something has happened. So today's sermon and today's gospel is really about hindsight. The thing is, unlike our ridiculous warning labels, which really, do people really fall asleep with their hair dryer? I don't but unlike these ridiculous warning labels, life is not as predictable or as simple, right? There are many things that we do that feel like unchartered waters. Many things that could be different every time we do it. We might choose the same thing over and over and the result's going to be different, right? Um, for instance... I have two children. Any of you who have more than one child know that, you know, what works for this one doesn't. We had one that was like, oh, timeout chair. She was so good. Go to timeout. She'd sit in her timeout and she'd, although she would cry really hard and then go, the timer's going off. But she would sit in her chair. This one, oh my gosh. I don't know how we survived this one. He's a fine young man now, but wow, then it was, it was a little bit rough. Um, or going on a particular vacation, right? You pick something that you think is going to be really fun, really nice. When we got married, I didn't want to go to a hot place because I don't like the heat, right? So I insisted we go north. 
So we chose a place in the Poconos, and um, it ended up being kind of a hilarious trip. Um, the only thing I'll really share is just that the entire wall was covered in red shag carpet, the wall. <laughs> in hindsight, if we would looked more closely at the pictures, we would have noticed. But, you know, oh well. And yet there's many things that are also just hard to see in the moment even if it's something that we know the consequences are, gonna, are possible. Um, but we just maybe don't even believe that it's going to happen to us. Uh, my husband and I watched this movie the other night called Snatched. It was from 2017. It's about a mom and a daughter, and they decide, or, well, the daughter's going on a trip to Ecuador. She begs her mom to go with her, so she does. Long story short, the mom's been stressed out the whole time about being kidnapped, and guess what? They do get kidnapped. Um, so sometimes, even when we... We know it's possible. We don't want to think it's possible. How many times has history repeated itself? How many times were people in history uh, seeing the signs, giving early warnings about what they thought might happen, and no one listened to them? How many of us have that one particular hang-up that no matter how many times we get in an argument, when someone says it, we just react the wrong way every time, and we get into that cycle, and we think at the end, why did I do that again? I know better than to engage that argument. How many times have you said to yourself, I should have known? Which, by the way, is a very dangerous and unhelpful question to ask yourself. We are human, and we make mistakes. So please, the next time you catch yourself asking that question, give yourself the grace that God would give you, okay? I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because we could talk a whole day about that, but just know that that is a very dangerous thing to ask yourself because we make mistakes. Today's gospel reminds me of this phrase, hindsight is 2020. Jesus comes to the disciples in a locked room, and they're terrified, and they're afraid, and they're in disbelief. The thing is, Jesus reminds them that he's already told them what was going to happen and that he was going to rise again. So it shouldn't be a surprise, right? But hindsight, you're like, oh, he did tell us that, right? He has to remind them that, that they, had, they had been told. We, of course, have the benefit of thousands of years of hindsight. We've been talking about what happens after the resurrection and the, the benefits that we get after that. But I can't help but wonder, before Jesus was crucified and rose again, would I have been one of the Jewish leaders that was so uh, entrenched in my tradition and my practices that I couldn't see what God was really doing? Or worse, would I have been one of those leaders that had him arrested and killed because I thought it was the right thing to do? Or would I have been Nicodemus and observed all these things and questioned and wondered and reflected on the scriptures, but even after all of that was in disbelief or was confused? We learn in Matthew's gospel that it took the tearing of the temple curtain, a large earthquake, and the appearance of all these saints that rose again at the time of Jesus' death that appeared to people all sorts of dramatic and traumatic things had to happen before the centurion finally said, truly, this man was God's son. Hindsight truly is 2020. So what do we do with this? We have the benefit of hindsight. What do we do? How do we respond? And Jesus gives those answers in the gospel today as well. First, he opens up the scriptures to the disciples and helps them understand once again we need to continually open the scriptures again and again, as Jesus did with the disciples. Because each time we do, we understand differently, and we think we might know the story, but when we go back, we're reminded of something else, or maybe it sparks something else in us. Because we have our life experiences to go with, and all of a sudden, the scripture takes on new meaning. We have our own little hindsights, but also collecti collectively, we have our own little like realizations, right? We, uh, a few years back when I was teaching confirmation at my previous church, um, so confirmation kids, you're really lucky because this isn't going to happen because I'm spoiling the secret now, so you don't have to do this. But we were at camp, 
And they were in the gazebo, and we were having our Bible study time, and they're like, oh, home, Bible study, listen to Pastor Heather talk about the Bible. Um, and we were talking about the Israelites, and they were confused as to why the Israelites would complain when they'd been taken out of slavery, and now they're complaining to God, oh, it was so much better while we were in slavery, and they didn't understand. So we took a big rope, and I wrapped it around the group pretty tight, and they had to shuffle in this group all together with a rope all over camp for like 25, 30 minutes. And they had this piece of paper, and it said, right now I feel, and this Bible study is. And so at the beginning, every five minutes, we'd stop and fill in the blank, right? And so at the beginning, they're like, right now I feel like, yes, this is so great. We don't have to sit and listen to Pastor Heather talk. We get to walk around camp, and this Bible study is rocking, you know. By the end of it, they were like, we just want to go back to the gazebo. I'm hot. I'm hungry. It's so hot. Can we please go back? This Bible study is stupid. And so we go back to the gazebo, and we read about the Israelites again. And this girl goes, oh, we are the Israelites. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you are. We had just talked about them, and yet they still had the same response. Because we're human. We are human. Jesus tells the disciples then to go and preach a gospel of forgiveness, of repentance. And repentance meaning to turn back around, turn towards God when we fall away. And we're constantly in this process of turning back towards God and receiving and resting in God's forgiveness. We are still called to this mission to teach people about God's forgiveness and mercy, God's love, God's grace. And this gospel, this good news, really is good news for us because while we try our very best, we also end up needing to repent over and over and over again, and we need, God, we need God's forgiveness over and over and over again. So we review the scriptures to remind us not only of how we're to respond, going out and living it and sharing it, but we read the scriptures because it's a comfort to us every time we look back and realize it's much easier to see where we went wrong after the fact. Because hindsight's 20, 20 We're human, and in the moments of our lives, we don't always choose well whether we know or not. We are doing the best we can to live a life of faith and share that life with others around us. And God has given us a great gift that even in our own disbelief or fear, we can find joy. Because whether we read the warning label or not, the hindsight of God's grace and love, the hindsight of what God did for us through Easter and Christ's resurrection, for us is always 2020. Amen.